What's up, everybody? Sunday Sessions, episode 40, here to deliver a ton of insights on how to scale out your e-commerce business. My name is Eric Castellano. Welcome to the channel. Super excited to have you here and learn more about your businesses and guide you on the journey to success while building out your e-commerce storefront. So excited to have you here. Um, in the chat, let me know where you're from. I'm out here in the Northeast of the United States, a couple minutes out of New York City, and uh, I love, love Sundays, kicking it with y'all. You know, I try to go live every Sunday and provide tons of insight. So excited to have you here. What software do you use to scan through your wholesale suppliers, catalogs in bulk, fast, not manually? So we've actually built our own. It's called SourceCorrect right now. It's only available to Inner Circle members. Um, but what we use for years and we recommend to our community is Scan Unlimited. Um, and I believe we, we offer like a month or two of free or some discounts and stuff, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, so you definitely want to have a UPC scraper. Keep in mind, most people rely too much on their UPC scrapers. It's It does them a huge disservice, right? Because you're waiting for a software to spit out results instead of putting in the manual effort to do some additional research on these products. And I guarantee you're missing out on opportunities. So a little backstory, Sebastian just spent a week in Colombia with one of our Inner Circle members, you know, helping them train. They have about 40 or 50 virtual assistants down there. And just to put it into perspective, how efficient our business is and how inefficient most businesses, their 40 to 50 virtual assistants purchase the same amount of inventory that one of my buyers buys. One person. I have one person on my team that purchases the same amount of inventory that 40 or 50 virtual assistants purchase, right? So the purpose of them joining the inner circle was to increase their businesses and Sebastian flew out there and spent some time with them and help them optimize their processes. About how many sales per month do you recommend to generate 100K a month in profit? About a million, give or take $100,000, you know, figure net. You're looking at the bigger you grow your business, the harder it is to keep higher net margins. But the bigger you grow your business, the more revenue you have. So losing a percentage or two on net margins doesn't really affect you because the volume supports the profits. Right. It's all about profit dollars. You know, most people are so focused on what's your margin, what's your what's your ROI. It's like, no, how much money is going into your pocket? Let's talk about that. And then to follow up with that, how much are you keeping from the government, right? By leveraging some tax write-offs and investing in some real estate, putting your money to work for you instead of work against you. It's one of my main focuses in, in 2023. I got a couple hundred K that I'm going to dump into some real estate and really get scaling here because I'm getting murdered on the tax game, getting murdered. Spent a few hundred thousand dollars tax last year, killed me. Yeah, and figure two, cost of goods for a typical wholesale business is about 42% of your sales, 40 to 45. I call it 42 because it lands right in the middle. Uh, but you figure in order to do $100,000 in monthly sales, you're going to have to invest between 40 and 50, 40 and $45,000 in inventory. Bree said, do I have any advice on getting into the dangerous goods program? I've been selling, waiting on the wait list for years. So no, I don't have any advice. Unfortunately, it's just a waiting game. What you can do is check on your application status. Status. If you search hazmat in the search bar of Seller Central, um, it can. there's an option. One is enroll and the one under it is check the status of your application. So you can see the status of your application. Um, average margins wholesale 15, 22, between 15 and 22 uh, percent. Advantages of having a warehouse quality control. Uh, you get to control the process. You get to fine tune your systems to lower your pr production cost per ASIN, which we call your PCPA. Um, and you get to open more wholesale accounts because some companies will, will only ship to commercial addresses. Um, you get to train a team. It's it's there's a lot of upside, but in the beginning, it's not it's not required. Yeah, I don't. I would not be selling washing machines on Amazon. Not a not a good idea. Only because the fees are going to be crazy. And uh, one of my buyers actually made a mistake the other day when you're researching oversized products. A lot of times the FBA fees are inaccurate because nobody ever sent the product FBA. So what they did was, I don't know how big those drums are. I think they're 80 gallon drums. Uh, one of my buyers bought like five or six 80 gallon drums. It weighed over 400 pounds um, for FBA. They were like a couple hundred bucks each. And it was just a nightmare, you know, now we had to create a remote a disposal order. It cost us two and a half thousand dollars to dispose of it because it wasn't selling because 
he made a mistake on the purchase and it was just a nightmare to deal with. Um, I'm really struggling to change your viewpoint from looking at ROI to profit margin. What perspe perspective can you give me? All right, so when you when a company at the end of the year, you sit down with your accountant and your business partners and you're reviewing the growth of your business, you're not talking about ROI, right? Nobody's saying, oh, we invested this much and we made this much. No, it's like, what's your margins? You know, what type of money did you make? Because margin's a basic percentage. So if you operated at a 10% net margin, you did a million dollars in sales, you made $100,000. So understanding your gross margin as well as your net margin, and then the difference between the two is deducting your production cost per ASIN. That will give you a lot of transparency into your business. So we have a great video right here on YouTube explaining that. So you can kind of learn how to do it. And I suggest you spend the time to watch it. It's maybe a 25 minute video, but it could potentially change your whole operation because after working with thousands of Amazon companies, hundreds of them have no idea about their numbers and they're doing their business a huge disservice by doing so. For all those who don't know, this is what Dennis just said. For all those who don't know, I've been selling on Amazon for seven years, bought Eric's course six months ago, just to sharpen my skills, could definitely say best course in the biz. Appreciate you, man. You know, when you're, would you just say you're doing seven million a year, five, five to seven million a year in the UK? So, and at the end of the day, a lot of people they join just for that, right? Because all it takes is one one nugget of information to change the game for you. You know, I just posted on Instagram yesterday. I just spent ten thousand dollars for a one day mastermind. I guarantee you, I'm going to receive you know a, at least at minimum a ten x return on that investment in a short period of time. Probably closer to forty or fifty x once I implement the strategies I learned. So it's like most people aren't willing to invest in themselves. You know, I uh, about what was this? Maybe a year ago, I invested in a very high level uh, mentoring program for myself, and you know, it was close to one hundred thousand dollars to join. And within the first phone call, I got my hundred thousand dollars worth of value. You know, the, the person whose mentoring uh, program it was, and there's like a annual events and in-person things and private community access and all this. But if I didn't get any of that and that person, when they hung up that first hour phone call, I never talked to any of them again. I felt like I got my value in, in, in 60 minutes for a nearly $100,000 investment, right? So sometimes it's just, it's just about knowing the who, right? Instead of the how. So most people don't know the how. Find the who. I'm the who for Amazon Wholesale. Do Amazon sellers on Amazon have exit opportunities? Absolutely. So right before COVID, we actually got an offer for multiple millions of dollars to buy our wholesale business. Thank God we passed uh, because once COVID hit, our business literally 4 x over those two years. We went from averaging like 20 million a year to now we're pumping out 60 plus million a year. So I'm so grateful we didn't sell at that time. Um, but yeah, what, what, what a company would be purchasing when they buy a wholesale business is your relationships and your systems and processes, right? Nobody's looking to buy a wholesale business that has no infrastructure. You're, you, you, there's no value. It's essentially just a side hustle at that point, right? You got to treat it like a business, building out systems, having teams, having a hierarchy of management, right? Building and growing those relationships, harvesting them through going through trade shows and, having those processes because that's what somebody's going to invest in. Uh, what is your strategy when it comes to sellers who do not match lowest price but insist on lowering it by one cent? I usually let them sell out, right? It's an inefficient business model. They're going to fail in the long run at that rate. So I usually just let them sell out, drive their price to the bottom, do what they do, they'll disappear. And most likely in six to 12 months, they won't even be an existing Amazon business anymore. Yeah, so it's possible for a listing to have multiple UPCs. You usually see, see it in international listings, um, but sometimes you'll see it on, on Amazon as well. Um, and all those listing UPCs are connected to the product. Nate just said, do you just finish up creating a spreadsheet for all the ASD suppliers? I love it. That guy's going in there with a mission. He's going to crush. Uh, do you recommend looking to any of the private label brands going? Um, so unless you're trying to private label something, no, there's no need to. I always like to explore it, you know, and we give the rundown in our walkthrough of like where you should be allocating most of your time, you know, but I encourage you if you're going to ASD and you're investing in the experience, like go explore the rest of the show. Just don't allocate a large percentage of your time to it, right? It can't hurt to go talk to some of the private label companies and just see what type of opportunities are out there. You know, anything that's going to increase this is good for you. 
Uh, most people usually start with RA. I'm thinking about starting wholesale off the bat. What's your advice? I listen. If you got the funds to support the wholesale orders, usually I suggest having between two and five thousand dollars to start. Absolutely. You know, most people start with RA because it's got a low barrier of entry. Anybody can go into a Walmart, Marshalls, a TJ Maxx, a Kroger, wherever you're going, and buy something off the shelves. It's like it's it's very easy to do. So it has a low barrier of entry, low cost to entry, and it'll help you understand the fundamentals of Amazon. So can it hurt to do something like that? No, it can't. You know what? If your goal is to go all in, I suggest while you're doing that, buying a couple products here, a couple products here to understand the process of selling on Amazon, building relationships with wholesalers. Yeah, Jam. So uh, when we do release Source Correct, right now it's available to Inner Circle members. Then second access would be eSellers or I, and then be released to the public. I don't have a timeline for you. You know, I, our my main goal here is to always focus on the community first, right? The community that the people who pay me, you know, that's who that's who we help first. And it's, it trickles down. It's inner circle, East Sellers or I, and then the public. And what I do is every Sunday I jump on these phone calls to deliver tons of information to help you all grow your businesses. So I don't have a, a timeline for source correct releasing. That's where Sebastian's ballpark. Um, but what it does is going to change a lot of people's lives. Can you send in an SDS sheet, which is a safety data sheet to sell some hazmat products on FBA, even when you're not in the hazmat program? The only thing you could do is submit the MSDS material, safety data sheet, to try to get it classified as a non-hazmat product. But as long as that product is classified as a hazmat, you cannot send it to FBA if you are not part of the hazmat program. I have a phenomenal video on how to fill out that form to submit it to potentially get it removed from a hazmat if you don't think it is a hazmat and it's possibly classified it correctly. So you can just pop in, I think, just search Amazon Lit Hazmat or Amazon Lit SDS, and it'll pop in and show you how to fill out the form, what information you need, how to submit it to Amazon, um, and then you can take it from there. How much advertising did you do in 2022? So let me give you some real metrics here. So 12 times 12, about $140,000. Did 63 million. Do you use ads only to clear old stock? How do you deal with the fact that others could benefit if they win the buy box? So nobody could benefit from your ads. Um, your ads are only showed shown if you have the buy box. So if you own the buy box, your, your ads are shown. If you don't, it doesn't matter. Um, and we use advertising to increase sales to move out old stock yeah what's your thought on amazon fees keep increasing do you believe in doing a lot of ads is good i mean if you own a private label brand you have to run ads right it's how you stay competitive uh, i'm not worried about the fees increasing because when the fees increase the prices on amazon increase so it's not a concern for me and what are some of your pricing strategies some people raise price during the night and keep the buy box up i let my repricer Mid repricing. I set a floor and a ceiling and I let the repricer work its magic. I mean, that's why I pay for the service. But once in a while, you got to jump in and do some manual. And I do like the night creeping, which is what you're referencing, Glenn, where in the evening or a lot of repricers will increase the price subtly to try to get the buy box higher for when sales really start to happen in the day, right? Because there's a schedule on Amazon. So as far as East Coast time goes, most of our sales happen between 6 p.m. and 11 p.m. at night, right? From about 1 a.m. To, to like 8 or 9 a.m. in the morning, sales decrease drastically, right? So there's that's another thing to consider when you're looking at buy box statistics because I've analyzed sellers against each other before. Or my my sales and some of our member sales, we've been on phone calls and we said, hey, we're selling the same product. Let's look at the numbers and we'll look at buy box statistics in Keepa. And let's say I get 30 percent of the buy box. They get 50 percent. But I'm selling double the amount of inventory they're selling. Right. But I have 20 percent less buy box share than they have. What that tells me is Amazon's allocating the buy box to them in off shopping hours. Right. So even if you're winning 50 percent of the buy box, but your 50 percent of the buy box is in off shopping hours, which in the U.S. is from, you know, midnight to early in the morning, then you're actually getting less sales than someone who's winning the buy box a lower percentage of the time at the peak shopping hour. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. This is amazing. I love spending my Sundays with you. Uh, I love learning about your businesses, helping you grow, helping you thrive. You know, my goal is to help you um, reach financial freedom. Right. That's the that's the name of the game for me. And any way I can assist doing that, I love providing the insights to help. So, you know, Amazon's absolutely changed my life, revolutionized my life as well as my family's life. 
Um, something I'd like to share with all of you is like uh, about eight years ago, I was living out of a car. Once in a while, Sebastian would let me sleep on his couch. My parents had nothing to do with me. I was a taker. I wasn't a giver. Um, and I sucked people's energy out of them when I was around them. And now I've completely shifted my entire life. And um, for ASD, I'm flying my entire family out first class in hotels, rooms, and, and, and events we're going to go to, dinners. I gave my cash, credit card. Like They don't have to worry about anything, right? And eight years ago, that's all I wanted. So I try not to forget where I came from because where I came from allowed me to change my life because without that very, very low point that I've experienced, I'd never be able to see the highs that I have now. So I'm grateful for the lows, super grateful for the lows. The lows provide the highs and still in life today, there's peaks and valleys and ups and downs, you know, so you just got to roll with them. But I, I guarantee you, you will experience what you're looking to experience if you do not quit before the miracle happens. Most people quit when they're right around from turning the corner. You know, you got to put in the sweat equity. I tell people all the time, give yourself a year. That's what Sebastian told me when I first started. Give yourself a year, Eric. If you're not happy, you can go back to sleeping on people's couches, living out of your car, being a fucking bum. You know, and I gave myself a year and it absolutely changed my life. Yeah, Amazon can literally change your life mentally and financially. Not exaggerating. Absolutely, Mike. All right, my friends, appreciate you all. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Stay grateful, stay lit, and make some time, shave some time out of your day to spend it with your loved ones. Talk soon.